Um, I put on here a reminder of our mission because it's been updated lately. Oh. And as docents, you know, your mission is kind of similar to the museum's mission, obviously, or part of what you're doing is helping us meet our mission. So as a reminder, our mission now is to impart knowledge and inspire appreciation of humanity's relationship with wildlife and nature through art and education. So we simplified it, we pared it down a lot. Um, the vision is to be the world's premier repository of wildlife art. And our values, which were recently added, integrity, excellence, collaboration, transparency, accountability, and financial responsibility. Wow. That's just for you guys to know. <laughs> you do not have to memorize any of that. <laughs> financial responsibility, you gotta put that up there. Um, so some notes and reminders from the front desk. Um, they're reminding us to please meet groups away from the admissions desk because they remind us every year. Summer's busy and it's hard to hear at the front desk so they want us to meet our groups like at the base of the stairs or over by Swamp Donkey or over by, by the Totem if it's quiet over in that area. Just a few steps away from the front desk so that they can concentrate on their sales. Um, and we've fairly recently updated the group tours policy uh, we charge $50 now, right, for a docent tour, is that correct? I was yeah. trying to remember, I think so. Just good for you guys to know that. Um, and we added some verbiage in, in the group tours sort of late cancellation policy that we send out to groups when they book um, that includes verbiage that, I think it said this before for the most part, but all docents at the National Museum of Wildlife Art are volunteers, so we are very mindful of their time and schedules when booking group tours. Docents are available upon request only, and there's a note in there that you're not, it's not guaranteed that they can get a docent. So even if they say they want one and they request one and they book it, things happen and things come up, they are given warning ahead of time, even if they're disappointed by hearing it, <laughs> that a docent is not a guarantee when they're here. But so you guys don't charge for me on Tuesdays. Correct. And if somebody else just wanted to stand around and mm -hmm. have them say, hey, there's a docent on duty if you want a tour for free. Absolutely. I, I always encourage mm -hmm. you if you're not if you're not signing up for group tours or if you want more practice or if you want more hours, you want to be here more, um, you're more than welcome to do gallery duty and just be in the galleries. I find just walking through the other day, I had a couple stop and ask me a question and I ended up chatting with them for 10 minutes. and. Even if it's not a like a tour, it still gives you a little bit of practice in getting comfortable and in talking to people about a piece. Um, if they if they directly ask you, or if even if you just tell them, I'm I'm a docent, I'm in the galleries today. If you have a question, come find me. Um, I think that's great. So, yes. What's the policy if somebody removes their mask while mm -hmm. you're giving a tour? So that's a flexible situation. So right now, as far as I understand, like the third week of May, we're going to be reevaluating the mask mm -hmm. policy. Yeah, so it's not flexible right now. Right. But what's flexible is where it will go in the future. Right. So right now, it's required. So I, if I, you I, see somebody, you need to tell them. I hate to say, I had a couple the other day, and I said, I'm fully vaccinated. And they said, oh, we are too. And I said, if we just put our masks down so it makes it easier to hear me, would that be okay with you? And they said, yes, so the three of us are now. And that was a small group. That was only a couple people, a couple. you know, couple. informal tour. And I checked to see if they had, if they were vaccinated. Did you look at their vaccine cards? I did. But <laughs> 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 yeah, they just, they just put our word for it. Yeah, that, that pisses off other visitors. Does it? It, it can. Actually, it would really piss me it? off to mm -hmm. know it. If I got to wear this stinking thing yeah. to be in there the were v Nobody else in the gallery really. That's, oh, I get that's that. But that's, 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 that to me is there. But yeah. with other people around, it's yeah. hard for people to hear you and yeah, understand you. I guess oh, my point is that the third week, I'm hoping that the third week of May we can get rid of this. And I know. Good problem. And, and, it's, and it's very possible. It is. Because the museum, I think, is feeling like once the town does not require it, right. we won't right. Right, require it. And that's likely that's to happen. that's changeable, too. They could yeah. change, you know, the city could come back, the town could, could change uh -huh. that again, too. Yeah. So we have to just kind of be flexible. And I, I think the policies. bigger issue is the numbers in the galleries. Yeah. Because yeah. the county right now is at 500 or half your capacity. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And our numbers are still real low uh -huh. in, these built, in these rooms. Right. So and I, I think, think well, they're going to change that. I do think they're changing that. Not Did I hear that they were removing? Are they removing them completely? I, I read something about they were removing them. I just can't remember. I read what. that too, and I can't remember. But 
I said the party. party walked up and said, I'm sorry, you're the 11th person in here. You've got to wait in the hall. Is that a good thing? No, but know. somebody might not come in because. Yeah. Right, right, right. I've never had to say that to yeah, anyone. Yeah. And we would never ask a volunteer to police like that. Yeah. Either. But um, I think just seeing it is a, oh, okay, I'll come back to this. Because this is 10. Yeah, I mean, this is a big I had a tour that was like eight, and yeah. I couldn't take them in, ideally, to conservation or those other oh, ones. Cause they're like four. Right. Or six. But did you? We stayed on the edge, uh -huh. and I went in and talked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not screwing around, because you know what? You get that yeah. one person in the group who says they're okay with it, mm -hmm. and the next thing you know, it blows up on social media, right. or it blows yeah. up. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I don't like the rules, and I but I understand, I, I'm not, I can't change this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it is true what you said, some visitors will be very upset if they see another visitor mm -hmm. not wearing a mask and they go to the front desk and they complain. They right. say, so and so in that gallery does not have a mask on. Mm -hmm. Did the museum make any changes in its ventilation as a result of all of it. Uh, you know, we have a really sophisticated yeah, ventilation system, system. Right there. the HVAC yeah. system, and I don't think it needed any changing. I think it's uh, it's running the way it you know, has always been. Thank you. And we can't open windows, so yeah. Yeah. Right. that would mess the environmental controls big time if we tried to open some windows. Right, just like when we opened the doors with the smoke. Right. I remember I did that by mistake and had the. I keep. I always open the door going in on the tour, and I forgot to tell that last person mm -hmm. who comes through to p please close the door. And it was smoky outside, uh, so security just followed me like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's those weird things I think that. Were you do. out looking at the sculpture? Is that what? Yeah, I had come in down by the bottom and had actually, you know. Yeah. And then when I come to GYE, those doors are closed as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, if you come out of the special area and you want to go into King, which I think is the only way on a tour to, to really access that gallery and then take them back out to the front, you have to go through another door that we're not supposed to open. But you go through, and as long as someone closes it, mm -hmm. I mean, I, those are just weird things on tours that right. kind of happen. Yeah. And you have to just react. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So going back to the um, group tours late cancellation policy that we send out to all group tours, we said that we don't guarantee a docent. Um, we tell them that uh, if your group is running late, to notify the museum as soon as possible. Um, the policy is that a docent will wait 15 minutes for a group, and if they're later than that, you you are not obligated to wait all day long for a group. So, 15 minutes. Um, is acceptable as a, a time to wait. Mm -hmm. If you have more time and you know they're coming in 25 minutes, then it's, mm -hmm. it's up to you, but the policy is 15 minutes to wait. Um, if your group's running late and you know that you can't stay that late, like you can wait a while but you can't stay late, you are welcome to give an abbreviated tour and just say, you know, I'm sorry, I have an appointment and we're going to do a, a faster tour. Um, and that's completely acceptable. So there are there times when you can't get anybody to do a tour with all of us? As I would say it's pretty rare to not fill, <coughs> fill something. I think the only reason that it might not fill is if it's, if it's a tour someone's given before, like some of those event tours. Those are harder to fill. Mm -hmm. um, so that's about the only, or if it's like a really after hours or a strange time or early in the morning or something, if they request a special thing, that might be hard. But I don't think, I wouldn't say that we have problems with that, Bobby. I think yeah, we, have a, seem like we have a good core. Sure. There's enough. Group. Yeah. I think the events is the issue. The events is the issue. And, you know, Wendy and I are, we'll be, we'll be talking about that and more. We've already talked about it a little bit, but, well, yeah. <laughs> They're a problem and everybody That's is aware problem. of that. Yeah. Yeah, if you ever had to have 25 people in here from the tour, it's just awful. You stand in the middle of the room and then you run around the outside. <laughs> um, and then there's some details here about cancellations. Um, don't really need to talk about that here, but just so you know that they, those groups are given that information before they mm -hmm. um, schedule a dose of um, I was chatting right away when you all got here about Jennifer and Danny and I 
Um, just in case some of you missed that, um, Jennifer's pretty busy with marketing. Danny Knight at the front desk, and I will be the ones who will be sending out emails to contact docents to fill the tours. Um, we do still have um, the red book at the front desk, but we are concerned a little bit about double booking and, and with things being really busy, not keeping up with that really well. So I do encourage everybody to try and use VicNet. And I want to do another training next Monday with you guys, and we can talk about other things next Monday too if we need to. But um, we have the iPad and the laptop computer in the volunteer office with VicNet already on it. Um, as long as you can remember your password, which I've given everybody basically the same password, so it's pretty easy to log in. So we definitely encourage people to use VicNet just because it will help us streamline the whole process of scheduling tours. Um, so thanks for giving it a check. And if you do use the Red Book, just make sure that you tell Danny. Um, at the front desk. He should be there pretty much all the time, you know. Is this the one that's been in your office all this time? He's been, his office is by the volunteer office that tucked away where Maggie used to be. Yeah. And so he's most mostly at the front desk. And the red book is so behind the, the admissions desk, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is the book in the volunteer office? Then? So that's just for logging hours to write down. Oh, what? Yeah. If you, yeah. You pay. Yeah. yeah. If you can't, okay. if you don't want to use VicNet to log I'm hours. Correct. Uh, when I do a Tuesday tour. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Yep. Book, yep, you can do it that way. And I just enter them in VicNet at the end of the month. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so if you do the Red Book there behind the front desk, if you do use that because VicNet's not working or you're having trouble with it, the Red Book is there for you. Um, just make sure you tell Danny that you've, put your, that you've signed up for a tour so that he can make sure to check it in VicNet and make sure someone hasn't already signed up for it. Because I'd hate to have two docents show up for a group of two people. And, um, yeah. And Danny's going to enter a bunch of them in today. So we do have some tours coming in for, I believe, for May and June. Maybe April yet, I'm not really and sure. Maybe they'll be emailed to us. Like and then, yep, they'll be emailed to you. Either through Danny or I. Yeah. Um, so as far as the group tour size for right now with COVID, we're sticking to the one docent per group of 10 still. So. Maybe that will increase later, but I don't know. I mean, it's kind of nice to keep it small if we can manage that. So I think most people like a group of 10. That seems pretty good. It's really nice. I mean, I know some people prefer the bigger groups, but sure. I like a group of 10 personally. Yeah. Yeah. If you're wearing a mask, it's really hard to project yeah. enough if it's a yeah. much bigger group. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's going to continue to be our policy until further notice. So moving on to sort of an overview of docent tour basics, right? Um, your aim is not so much to instruct people with factual information, but to stimulate your audience and to introduce them to look carefully at the art and sort of become involved in the art. So really it's a customer service, just trying to give people a good experience and something to remember when they leave. Um, that's more important than what you know or don't know about a specific painting. Um, it's really just an engagement and a customer service position. So you can think of it that way and that hopefully that makes you feel comfortable with giving a tour. Um, there's one of the articles um, that's on our, our website, which I made a link on here too, but on the volunteer page where I've listed all the required readings for docents and like recommended readings. There's one called Preparing for and Presenting Your Tour, um, which is an older article and still really applicable. So when you're planning your tour, like before you've given your tour and you're thinking about what you want to talk about, there's four key questions to consider. Who? Who is my audience? Why? Why are they here? What are their goals and interests? What? What is my subject matter? What works will be discussed? And how? How will I present my tour? What kinds of teaching techniques will work? And those questions are all interrelated and will determine the direction that your tour takes. Um, you can think of a tour in basically three pieces. So you have your introduction and you have some transitions where you're moving through the museum and you have a conclusion. And really each of those parts can be pretty brief when you're introducing. <coughs> you might spend three to five minutes, I would say. Um, 
and then you know the half hour 45 minutes of touring and a, and a couple sentences as you transition you know each transition might be a sentence or two and then um, you know a minute or two for a conclusion so it's nice to have it kind of broken down like that I think to when you're planning and keeps them all kind of in a similar format it shouldn't get easier for you so in the introduction portion um, you want to confirm with your group the length of the tour that's always a good idea how much time do you guys have are you on your way to the airport that kind of question is a good thing to establish at the beginning um, it's great to tell them a little bit about what you hope to accomplish on the tour or what a, a little tidbit about what they might learn or what your focus might be or if you have a theme that you're going to follow you can let them know in the introduction i like to let them I like to ask them if they've been here a bit, if they've been to Jackson Lake yes. Lodge. Yep. You can learn a lot by that. Mm -hmm. yep. And also if they've seen any wildlife mm -hmm. and so forth. And now and and the elk refuge. But if they have if they've just come from the airport, right. You don't I mean you don't bother with all that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, you can get some really helpful information from them as far as you know what they might be interested in if mm -hmm. one's a one's an elk biologist or you know one's a docent at the metropolitan you know it's good to I know like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and i chose to only talk about the history because yeah. i couldn't talk to them about brush strokes or <laughs> right. yeah power choices or you know they right. know all that you so know. you can choose what kind of questions what do you want to know about this person do you want to know you know obviously it's nice to know where they're from and you know is there a museum that they visit there frequently like are they regular museum people mm -hmm. or do they like not give a crap about museums and they're just here because their buddy wanted to come or you know whatever um it's it, good to know that but there's one group that always as we're in the beginning they have always eaten in the works john climber room mm -hmm. the night before they come so then I always mm -hmm. try to pay attention and, and get them there. Mm -hmm. um, but I say for most of the, and I know REI is starting to do tours in the valley as well, because mm -hmm. I met some people last week who That's were interesting. REI. Yeah. Well, they're bringing a story here. Yeah. Right, but they're also bringing tours. Right. Oh, okay, got it. Um, I, I'd say I don't, most of my tours that I get, they're at the end. And of their visit. In yeah. They're on their way to the airport sometimes. Right. Sometimes, so yeah. Or they have. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's just a big difference in if they're coming in the morning and they have lunch at Pallet. I've yet to find a group that's ever on time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? It is. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, just those are like different things. A lot of people, to think I, about. I like to ask them, are they going to or have they just been to Yellowstone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Yeah because that makes a difference in mm -hmm. did you see are you going to look for you know that's what right. i made i always made in the beginning i made the mistake of asking anybody have a favorite museum <laughs> okay and that got me nothing mm -hmm. but then didn't say anything no oh. and if you're in the beginning of the tour everybody's quiet uh -huh. anyway because right. they don't know each other right. yeah but then i've learned i have i tried to ask now what museums have you been to recently? Uh, right. right, and that they'll answer. Yeah, subtle. I difference. mean, if you if you ask yeah. if you it's ask huge, that question, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it, it makes it, so. I mean, it feels kind of subtle, but it makes a big difference in how they respond. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. yeah. there's no oh, that's not grab that place. Yeah. I mean, right, right, right. right. It could be a bad museum, but they just happened to be there recently. Right. <laughs> so I find that sometimes, if, especially if you get those blank stares. Uh -huh. Well, I guess that tells you they're not museum people. I mean, that right. does tell you something that's if you ask them and you get blank stares, <laughs> and it's like, okay, these people are not museum people. <laughs> and anyone who loves museums could just go off with them. You're right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, I always say uh, we're happy you're here. We hope you, you're happy you're here, because you can always tell a few guys in the back. Oh, yeah. What am I doing? Yeah, right. right. And so, and I like to sometimes meet people outside, depending True. on the group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to start, yeah. especially once we get the botanical tour put in too. That'll be a nice addition for people to be aware of too. Um, the native plants and garden. And where is that actually going to be? Is it up, up, up above? Or? 
I don't know exactly. It's yeah. going to be so. It's going to be up in in certain areas along the north part of the sculpture trail, like in the aspen trees. There'll be some plants. Oh, okay. And then if you go down that pathway towards the restaurant, down the mm -hmm. steps that go past the auditorium yeah. and end up at the big mm -hmm. owl sculpture, yeah. there's some things planted along that pathway. Okay. And I'm trying to think. We'll have to have a tour of the, oh, the, the, the planters yeah. on the restaurant terrace. Yep, some planters have wild wild seeds oh, starting okay. to come up mm -hmm. and plants. Oh, that's stuff. clever. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Um, okay, so that's kind of introductions. Make sure to you know introduce yourself. Um, you might also want to include a brief history of the museum if you like or something about the architecture um, it's up to you you know um, transitions are it's moments of change so they should help people sort of shift from from one thing to the next and they should be able to kind of make relationships they should have some idea of why you went to this painting after you went to that painting um, especially if you're following kind of a theme so you're just kind of okay now we're going to see what you know what this painting has to do with that. Um, and also the first transition from the lobby area into the galleries is a good time to talk about gallery etiquette and explaining what they can and cannot do in the gallery. Sometimes that's a natural place to put that information. You feel free to take pictures, you know. Do you know, Rachel, if uh, the summer exhibits are going to have any restrictions on photography like the Ai Weiwei or the uh, Andy Warhol. I don't know if we ever know that ahead of time, do we? Yeah, but I mean, it would be good to know. It depends on who owns it. Right. Yeah. Andy Warhol, they're really strict. I was so going to say, I would not be surprised if Andy Warhol, or if the Weiwei Wei is no Either photography. One, but yeah. We'll find out. Right. We'll let you all know as soon as we find out. Yeah, yeah. As part of that, you know, first volunteer training that we'll have with those exhibits, we'll make sure we know yeah. that info by then. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what else can I say about transitions? Transitions are a good time to like embellish something or ask a question, you know, does this make sense to you? Do you understand this kind of thing? Um, or make clarifications. And then um, in the conclusion, if, there's, if the group has time left to view other galleries, you can encourage them to do that. Or you can, if it's a bus tour and they have to meet at a certain time, it's good to be like, okay, you guys have 15 minutes before you meet your bus. Um, here are some things you can do, check out the shop, that, things like that. Um, if, a, if it's a formal tour, you can let guests know that you're available for additional information and try to remain in the galleries as long as they're around just to answer questions. Um, and for guests who might want to return to the lobby, you could walk back with them or direct them how to get back to the front from wherever you were in the gallery, wherever you end your tour. Um, okay, and then I made a list of just like general things to remember when you're giving a tour. You wear your name tag, introduce yourself, be welcoming and friendly, um, remember to use humor carefully, and sort of read the room. That's always a good point. <laughs> Some groups will really appreciate your humor and others might not, so. <laughs> yeah, no sense of humor. Right. Um, remember to be flexible, make adjustments to your style or your content if you need to. You might have a really great plan um, for a group and it might just tank and it's good to recognize that after a few minutes if like okay this isn't working I might <laughs> if they to. all start wandering yeah that. exactly <laughs> yeah you can kind of tell they're not terribly interested mm -hmm. then you might want to yeah. pick up the pace pick up the pace a little <laughs> or, or change your yeah. topic a little bit or whatever or um, just walk away or just walk away and say I'll be over here we're here for years <laughs> yes we're going home um, Try to ask open-ended questions to avoid putting your audience on the spot. Um, remember that it's okay to say, I don't know, or I'll have to look into that for you. That's or good. Yeah, or if you don't have an answer, <laughs> if you don't have an answer, ask them what they think. Um, and a bill, a finer teeth, doesn't like talking about the sarcophagus that Laurie loves to talk about. And uh, he was telling me that he had a group of people, or maybe it was him, somebody was telling me, I had a couple people who were like, I hate this. And um, they had this really strong reaction to it. 
and uh, it's okay to just like explore their reaction and to have a conversation with them about that? why do you say yeah. that? Tell me what, more. What bothers you about this, or what do you think is going on here? And it takes a lot of the weight off of you. You don't have to stand there and be like, "This is such and such a bird." You can say, "What kind of bird do you think it is?" Right? There's no right or wrong answer there in some respects. So, um, as long as the visitors having a conversation and they're they're engaging with the art, that's the point. So even if it's a negative reaction. I think the hardest part of any tour is reading feedback. Mm -hmm. And most communication in my world has always been non-verbal. Sure. Yeah. And it's really difficult. I think you really have to gauge, you have to know the geography, you have to know mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. I mean I think that is the hardest mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to practice other than ride the subway. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every group is different. Every they are, group right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's where the flexibility comes in, and just mm -hmm. go learning how to go with the flow, yeah. and just mm -hmm. be like, okay, right. this group is. I'm not going to capture so this group. So I have first. a question, Rachel. So yeah. most of the tours I give are not. They're not paying people who are here for a tour like docents right. do. Mm -hmm. Right. And so. What I've done in the past when a group really seems uninterested, I'll speed up and I'll finish way early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody's paid for an hour, would I be obligated to stick with them for an hour even if they don't seem interested? I mean, I guess my answer to that, would, my short answer would be no. Um, Maybe have a conversation with them saying, you booked an hour long tour, how are you feeling? Right. I, would, I would give them some mm -hmm. options like, mm -hmm. um, what else? What else would you like to hear from me? Right. Or, or if what someone you're feeling you like see? you need to would like to go off and explore on your own, exactly. that's fine. Yeah, that's true. Do you see like something that of interest we haven't talked about? about. Okay. Do you want to make sure you have time to visit the shop today? Yeah. Yeah. Think if you, you don't go in every gallery too, you could say no in there. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. On your own, you can just take it on your own at your own pace. Blah blah blah. That's good. Yeah. I would say that as a volunteer, especially about photography, because you don't need. You don't need to say, well, that's a buffalo. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> know. yeah I, I, okay, I guess I, I just haven't done tours where they've paid for yeah. an hour. I mean, I think what I hear for most volunteers is that that hour or 45 minutes goes by pretty fast. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, never very, it goes by pretty yeah. fast. Yeah. Very. So I don't think it's, I haven't heard anyone say that that was, that that has ever come up for them. Okay. So. But I would say, okay. as a volunteer, no, you are not obligated to just stay exactly. Have a, you know? <laughs> have a conversation, I guess. Yeah, is the just give give options. Uh -huh. you know, be flexible. Yeah. And give them some options too. I think one of the nicest things I've been told is that you really like this place, mm -hmm. and you Absolutely. really yes. I love the art. Yeah, that's, right. no, that's a good point. I, I had no idea this place was so great. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or oh, I learned. I, but I think I never would have learned if I mm -hmm. had just walked around. Uh -huh. For sure. Right. Yeah. No, I think as a docent, you, you can tailor this to what excites you. Because mm -hmm. if you're excited about it, they'll be excited about it too. Yeah. So yeah. don't feel like you have to talk about a piece you hate. Like Bill Fennerty, I always tell him, you don't have to talk no, about it. No, exactly. Like you don't want to. Just say, hey, come back and watch the video about that later right. if you're interested. Yeah. No, I always say, I'm going to show you the highlights mm -hmm. and I'm going to show you my favorites. Is yeah. that okay with everybody? Exactly. And they're usually they're like, they respond yeah. to that. They, yeah. Yeah. they yeah, respond sure. to it, and then, and then sometimes if it's, it's you know they got here last night. I, I notice that sometimes that people really want to go to the shop. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So you kind of gauge, like you said, if it's their last day or their first day, and mm -hmm. what they're going to do. Some next. of them, like Give ESS, us. they're tired of listening to people. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Uh -huh. If they, if, you pick up on that. If they have a chance to give you input right at the beginning, I'll often, depending on the group, um, I'll say, are you interested mostly in the animals here, mm -hmm. or the art, That's a good question. or the geography, or mm -hmm. stories? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But everybody's all different. Out. They have different. Right. If it's a big group, yeah. that can be problematic. Yeah. But you might then you can say, that. or all of the above. Right. And they always oh, like say that. all of the oh, above. Yes. Isn't that and I think that's yeah. such a much nicer way of asking than. What are you interested in? Yeah, right, right, exactly. right. Because right. right. that's not open ended. But then what it does is it gives you an open ended I love um, that. Um, possibility. Or all of the above. I wouldn't yeah. have thought to add on the end or all of the above. I love that. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, right. Cool. Well, that's, that's great feedback. Good. Um, a reminder that you are welcome 
free to use any props that you like. If you want to have some fur samples or um, artifacts to touch, or if you want to have an iPad for any reason, um, or if you want a clipboard, if you want to make, if you have your own notes, you're welcome to have them with you. Um, I think sometimes too, if you're if you're in a tour where you're where they're giving you feedback too, and you're really conversational, sometimes you can write down some of the things that they've said. I think a visitor appreciates that too, to see that you care and that you're listening. Um, so you're you're welcome to have a pencil and a clipboard with you if you want. Um, also, the the web app, like, did you hear that? You're welcome to make use of, of those during a tour. Um, if you stop at a painting and it's the wolf howling or whatever, you can play that too. That's that's great. Um, suggest lunch in the cafe or a visit to the museum shop. Always thank your group and invite them to return again or invite them to join the membership program. Um, yeah, that's all I wrote down for, for notes. What other, what did I forget? Does anybody? That's good. I never think to do that at the end of a tour. <laughs> I always feel like if I ask them to join that I'm saying, give me some money. You know? Yeah, no, you, there's like, a, you know, I'd love that. to see you come again, but right. yeah. I mean, maybe by the end of your tour, you've established if they're a local, yeah. you know, if they're a local and they, they've told you that they've been here a bunch and they really like the place, then that'd be a really you appropriate say, are you a member? Yeah, are you a member? You should show? be because you get some perks. With exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not give me money, you should join our membership, yeah. but it's just, it's it feeling it that out. way, though, especially for people from out of town. Right. Well, I think it's nice to be able to say thank you, and you're always open for the shop food, and, and I've never done this, but for membership to help help support us as we continue on our mission. Right. And we've got really those nice. webinars and stuff now. Right. I was going to say that's the value because I used yeah. to ask people to join Fonz, Friends of the National Zoo, mm -hmm. and they lived in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. free parking and all those things were worthless to right. them. Mm -hmm. But supporting of the mission mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is key. And membership is huge for this place. It is. Especially for those long distance people because they're a zero drain on resources. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but at the end of the day, people are happy. Mm -hmm. You know, you do have people who want to tip you or want to put mm -hmm. money. Yeah. Well, not say, hey, in membership, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Is also mm -hmm. just another, mm -hmm. you know, it's a box. Is yeah, the money support. box still out there? It is. So good. Yeah, I always tell. Oh, thank yeah, you so much. There. I'd really rather have you put money in the box mm -hmm. than to lobby. You know. Mm -hmm. That's nice. As much as you yeah. want to take it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right, but you want to take else. it, and then I used to give it to Maggie. Yeah. Used to she put it in the box. Or she put no, it she in said it was for volunteers. Oh, she put it in for volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, money, it, yeah. I would but take it. I used oh. to say no. Yeah. And now I say, great, we'll put this to our it's volunteer, the volunteer organization. Yep. Right. Yes. Volunteer organization. That's good. Because they for think right. party. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to tell them that. Yeah. For no. I mean, I think that was a pretty small budget for volunteers, so that's helpful. Yeah. But I don't want to say no. I do this because yeah, that's a good question, Suzanne. Suzanne asked. Yeah, Suzanne asked. Um, Suzanne asked where she could find some uh, props in the classroom. Um, we can show you some that are there and see what you might be interested in. But there's a whole box full of furs. Um, we have a large the kids especially a lot of the props. You know, it might not be appropriate for certain tours, but a science-based tour or uh, people who are from someplace where they've never seen an elk before or might be really interested in that. Um, you know, we have like the huge bison hide that I put on the floor for kids if we're doing sketching. Um, but there's also just some smaller samples. Oh, okay. um, and they've all been here long enough and they've been treated and they're all yeah. good to go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like we you have, have to be careful with any organic materials. Yes. You can't right. have right. it in from outside, right. but if it's here, right. it's, it's been, been here for dance. ages. And okay. We have some like rubber scat Samples, so you can you could do a whole animal poop tour if you wanted. <laughs> um, <laughs> you never know. You never know. Uh, what else do we have in there? We have some birds, some little bird specimens mm -hmm. in a tube. <coughs> People are really interested in the in the buffalo in the groves, mm -hmm. and when that was on the floor in the buffalo room, that was they always touched that. They always, mm -hmm. you, know, was a good mm -hmm. you would figure out what paintings you wanted to match that up with. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. right. It would be part of your 
part of your plan, you know? Mm -hmm. Like it could be the happy part of this one. I love to talk about these four. In a world, I tell the history of the bison. You know, the so you and would the bison, be cool the back to the bison, and the fires, and the this, and the that. Because they should not have touched a bison. Yeah. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, uh, and I'm sure they're in the stacks. Remember the sketches, the four sketches of all these bison, and right. then the shooting, and then they, and then the f the fourth one was just bones yeah. and well, awful, you know. The lone bison there just is so sad, you yeah. know. When you talk about right. the railroad coming and the mm -hmm. soldiers coming west, and you know, and um, all the stuff. I haven't seen those four for years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, Bobby. The Martin Garretson, yeah, yeah pen that's a, Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. The four. Yeah. Right. It was right. really well, well done. I haven't seen those in a while. They're probably doing their time in the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, we've got a lot in the stacks, don't we? I mean, yeah. Really, I think of yeah. so many that I'd like to see again. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Did the woman that I, I didn't talk last week that talked about the totem pole, yeah. did she ever, was she able to identify what type of Indian that was? We didn't talk about that piece. Oh, okay. We talked a little bit about the child and the fox. Yeah, I was gonna but we didn't talk about that. Piece. That's, I mean, you could ask me that discussion tonight. Yeah, I don't remember nice talking. Know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, nice to know his tribe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but there's so many tribes, and yeah. so many have yeah. faded away. You know, yeah. there were small tribes that, I mean, there were hundreds of tribes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, well, some, a lot of them are related, like the whole yeah. family yeah. of Sioux. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll be doing the video for for that training soon, um, probably this week. So I'll ask her that oh, okay. and try to include, because I'll give a little synopsis of things we talked about, probably some bullet points and oh, okay. or, you know, more information or more research or oh, okay. things like that. So I'll, I'll see if I can get an answer to that. You know, Lucretia did a lot of work on that painting. Did she? Yeah, that's one of her favorite ones to talk about. Oh. Hmm. Which hmm. one? The little the, boy? Oh, the little boy. The cat, the kid. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. the, the yes. one right there. The, oh, okay. the, the, the <clears throat> Hudson with the one on the end is um, I, <coughs> nice I, carpenter Hudson. I talk about what animals are herd bound and what ones are. And, why the little buffalo would need to be with a four-legged um, creature, oh, that's good. you know. Okay, um, what questions do any of you have before summer? Or are there any things that you feel you need practice on or more information about? What I'd like to do is really go on each other's tours. Yeah, we should just try tours, right? Yeah. So it's just everybody has a different tours. style and says different things. And, mm -hmm. and you can see that on logistics. You can see who's giving the tour. Okay, that's good. You can tell. And is everybody fine if anybody in this group joined their tour just to follow and of course learn? Sure. Sure. So that I love to steal from other people. Me too. And then they can tell you what you did wrong. I don't do that right now. I'm going to take my hands. I don't. I don't know very much. So there's on the um, volunteer training videos on the YouTube channel. Oh, okay. James Prosack was here maybe before you started. I don't oh, remember. Okay. Um, I can try and send, I can look for that specific video. There's a lot on regular YouTube about him, though. There is, too. Prosec. Mm -hmm. P-R-O-S-E-K. Prosec. Yeah. Okay. But there, I might be able to find, like, a, a timing in that video when he talks specifically about that piece. It seems um, like he did. That one where you come in the door. With yeah. the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He talked about a similar piece. Uh -huh. I might have also just made some notes about that when we did a training on him. Um, about what he said about that piece, so I'll, I'll see if I can find that, dig that up for you. Because yeah, he talks about why he doesn't have a key, right? And why he doesn't do that. Hmm. You know, I started 
with the the refuge so long mm -hmm. that it's really hard yeah. to so start there is. without that there. Sure. You know, exactly. you welcome them there, you do this, no. and then you talk about yes. what's across the highway. They're and fascinated then, by it. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in the, sum, in the summer. summer. To yes. say, this is, yes. yes. Like you were wondering what this big empty place is. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's only going to be gone for three years, was that what I heard? It's already been over a year. Is it three years? I thought yeah. it was. Two more years? Yeah. Oh. See, it's That's already been a whole year. Well, it was gone for a year, remember? And they said, well, we're not going to let that go again. I know. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? <laughs> so much for that, right? And then especially when they had his grizzly, I think it was the Yellowstone grizzly uh -huh. across mm -hmm. yeah. from it. Yes. Was, yeah. mm -hmm. it's great. And that yeah. one's also in the traveling exhibit. Yes. Yeah. That was Moose Flats. Moose Flats. Uh, Moose Falls. Moose, Moose Falls. Falls. Yes, Falls. That was it. Uh -huh. So just in terms of logistics, so when they have like the special showings, like those photographs and stuff, mm -hmm. do we don't usually talk about those? Do we usually do? It depends. I mean, I think that you have the freedom if you're interested to. Mm -hmm. A lot of docents, I think, especially with photography exhibits or with traveling exhibits, um, they might give a quick introduction or spend yeah. a minute like explaining why it's here or where are these from or she's yeah. from. Right. A little bit of what, background what information. What is the theme? You know? Yeah. And then let them explore it on their own mm -hmm. for some okay. time and then just be present and answer questions if they have any or give little tidbits, that's that's fine. Okay. I think that's really exhibit dependent. It is. Mm -hmm. You're right. yeah. You know, because that one that we had um, with just the four big photos, mm -hmm. uh, the time lapse ones, mm -hmm. that really required <coughs> speaking. Oh, right. mm -hmm. Because there was, it was yeah, not that's hard to understand. Yeah. It wasn't it's not standard, standard talk right. 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 Whereas something that's back there now, mm -hmm. to me, is a little easier mm -hmm. for the average individual who doesn't want to read the verbiage to right. get. Mm -hmm. right. Very true. You know, I used to go um, from the Gilcrease through to what was the Bison Gallery. Mm -hmm. but, and you have the Carrungias in there now. but. I used to be able to go through there before they put the benches there yeah. and I could talk about the big four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, I wonder and why now, there's you, there. can, you have to walk around all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think it know. has what to do with the flow with, during COVID, wanting mm -hmm. people to come in and go oh, off prescribed route. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why was that open? open? I would put in a request okay. that sometime they open it well, up. You know, when we start, it seems like May 1st is going to be a big change over time. Mm -hmm. So we can put in a request for that. Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. Yeah, we need more benches. And yeah. I need to bring back yeah. the yeah. 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 You, yeah. you could move those benches, but just And bring back the puppets and the you costumes in the children's gallery. Right. Right. That, mm -hmm. that is a recent thing, but that does flow. But I'm glad I always in that. That's why people are leaning on stuff. I know. Right. right. No, for sure. Because they're yeah. toast. I think yeah. it's time now. I think we could bring back the benches now. I do too. And people too. aren't so fearful of surfaces the way they mm -hmm. were when this first started. Right. Because they know. And the people have been together. I mean, these are people that right. right. tour. They're on a tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go back tired. to my Especially computer. Especially when they're tired, too. <laughs> now, when this ends, and I'm going to send an email saying, can we get Great. the benches? Great. Can Great. we get the benches well, back out? Can we move those yeah. benches? And what else? There was something else. And can we get the costumes and puppets back yes. out in the yeah. children's gallery? Yeah. yeah. I think it's time. Yeah. That yeah we can I do think it. so too. Yeah. I do too. Okay. Anything else that uh, other questions you have or things you want to practice specifically? We can also arrange some triangle tours aside from just hopping on mm -hmm. other group tours that are scheduled if you want to do more of a practice amongst yourselves. Can you put that on logistics? A, a time for yeah. triangle tours? I think that's a good idea. A tri triangle mm -hmm. tour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. To make it to make it a more of a to story. make a structure and then people right. can plug into that structure. I think you had it last summer. Well, I don't think we need a lot, but a few. Right. A few yeah. Would be nice. right. So I mean, it doesn't hurt to put it up there. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's not taking. Because we all learn so much from each other. Know. You know, and that's Absolutely. the thing. <laughs> and that's because we don't do gallery duty. Mm -hmm. That's where I always share the most information with yep. other docents was during gallery duty. Because right. mm -hmm. we didn't always have people, and we could always talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. Or we ate lunch together. Mm -hmm. But the way we're structured, because of tours, we lose that information from each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I think these musings about one painting have been great. Oh, I, 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 I uh, would hate to so have that stop. Uh, I, I, know, know, but I, I so think the noise level is difficult. Yeah. I thought yeah. about yeah. May because yeah. I my first thought for May was Lost Birds because I was going to ask Martha to do it, and I was going to ask you to do Climber because I needed to think about getting us away from the general public. Because mm -hmm. I'm hoping they're going to be at the door, busting to come in. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I don't want to move it up early, because that would make it easier, too. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like to continue that in some way. I'm just I think that's great. Not and if visitors want to tag on and listen, who cares? That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's true. But, yeah, I think to, to do a sculpture outside, because we'll be able to. It's a great mm -hmm. idea. And we got plenty of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then uh, and other small pockets. You know, um, well, I was talking to Sally, and I go, I just don't know very much about that peaceable thing. I, mean, I had to mm -hmm. miss, I didn't really know that she was doing that, but <coughs> I missed it. I didn't it, either. I, I was and, surprised to be here. Yeah, so I wonder oh, if there was a way just to get like sort of a summary of what yeah. You know, people when they're talking about these are so wonderful. But that takes yeah. away to me from it. And Musings has gone in a different direction than my original intent. Um, and I think there's kind of a, a mix because I, I, I'm going to try it next Monday um, and see how it goes because I've got Long Island Frog. Mm -hmm. oh. um, but it's all good. Yeah. But I definitely don't want to film it. Right. And um, I couldn't part, remember if we had filmed it or not. No, yeah. and part yeah. of it is about being here. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. And but I, I think you will find if we do the triangle tours, somebody's going to talk about those pieces. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. For sure. And uh, yeah, I do. But I think if you throw it up on logistics, yeah. I could also add some gallery shifts too, if that's helpful for people to see that and remind them that they can come in and just be in the galleries mm -hmm. on some of those busy hours or on the week I, tours. Right. Weeks, that's probably not a bad idea. Right. 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 And they can do pickup tours too. Right. The same. The same kind of thing. Same, I mean, I think of that those both as the same sort of idea. I know the front desk prefers it if we're in the galleries and not hanging out at the front desk, but they're having a little. That happening sometimes too. So, for trying to choose, yeah. Like if I signed up to be one of the three, yes. would I choose one gallery? Or so I think you could do it more. You like whatever you can do in like 15, 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. Okay. You give your 15, 20 minute tour mm -hmm. to the other two, and then you. Hey, or you show up and say, "What do you want help with?" Right. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, a short term person and a long term. Right. Person. What right. should I talk about? Yeah. Because <laughs> we're all we all have different wants, needs. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I love that everybody. Yeah. I love that everybody's tour is different. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. I do too. I do too. I think that's it's so a good time to try out a new idea too. If you're like, I wonder how it would work to do this. Can I can I try this with you for 15 minutes and see? I, I talked to someone last week and and she was like, you know, I really got to refresh my tour. Uh -huh. And I said, well, it's, there's the time where you just have to think, what do you enjoy? Right. Mm -hmm. And when you could go through this whole thing on art materials, mm -hmm. like. Uh -huh. You know, and I'm going to talk about, you know, because I find that if you do structure, architecture, or one of them things, I find it easier to engage if I have a lot of men on the tour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a bunch of photographers, mm -hmm. you know. Unfortunately, I never know who's in my group right. until I show up and ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't... Then you have to do it on the fly. <laughs> And so, mm -hmm. but if it's something that you're passionate about, correct, then you it's easy to do it on the fly. You can just just talk about it, you know. Somebody mentioned brush strokes, and I've never, mm -hmm. I've never talked about that because I don't really know. I mean, like sure. these painting so, I mean, it's painterly. Well, yeah, you know, some of that stuff. Like that well, those are things that you can. The people that would be here. Mm -hmm. Where are they from and what are they here for? And they're generally not, although I've had some, a tour from X museum here to look at our stuff. If they're from the museum, they already know about composition and our brush strokes and palettes. It would and be stuff. good to know those, so if you read the crowd, you like know, that, they will know that. So that maybe if they've come from a place that has an entirely different theme, mm -hmm. that to find out about animals and and the history of the artists coming west and, mm -hmm. you know, starting to paint them, 
is something that they're more interested in. Also, there's a lot of people that come in here, I think, that don't are more interested in seeing pictures of animals than than understanding about art. Because mm -hmm. uh -huh. most of them are here because somebody yeah. else signed them up. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's 80%. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the real different ones are when you get the, like, rungius at night. Those are, to me, those are high pressure tours. Because mm -hmm. yeah. there are people in there that know more than me. And that's okay. Yeah. My job is different. Right. right. So I think the, the biggest question is who is your audience? And how much fun do you want to have with them that yeah. day? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to things like brushstrokes and things, it's more of engaging them to look for that uh, yeah, just than explaining it or telling them things. But exactly. what do you notice about this painting or about the appearance or, of the brushstrokes? And then they can look closer. And or you can just talk about, hey, look, this person is really impressionistic. Just look at the background, how it's just all... You know, it's not really detailed and they don't show the sagebrush all over mm -hmm. each little thing. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, that's really a big difference on how they look, you but know. You always have to be trying yeah. to make your tour better is the, yeah. the, the bottom right. line. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly in, intrinsically motivated right. because Rachel can only do so much in quarterly trainings and we get exhibit training. But that's basically someone giving you, to me, a dictionary. And I still have to figure out how to put the words in order mm -hmm. to make it work for me. Mm -hmm. And if we don't just go out and do it, that's why I think triangles. For sure. And because we don't have a scripted tour, you know, right. you're, not, you're right. not being asked to memorize things or do scripted things. It's, it's for you to do how you like to do it because it should be fun for you. Yeah. This, you should be enjoying yeah. this. This is one of the joys of being involved in this museum. Uh -huh. yes. You can go where you want to go and talk about what you yeah. want to talk about as long as it's accurate. Right. <laughs> sure. sure, accuracy is good. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, if you're going to talk specifically about some artist and yeah. about his life, you kind of want to know about it. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I like to include sometimes with some groups, sort of, as long as people have been with animals, they've tried to tell others about it, whether it was through fables or cave drawings or whatever. And then when you go in over here, you can look at the Paul de Vos mm -hmm. and say, now he didn't see animals out in their own environment. Mm -hmm but he would go to zoos and menageries, sketch them, and then what's he supposed to do with his sketches? He puts them into a whole big painting, mm -hmm. all together. Now, what would you call this painting? And then I start getting well, them involved. Well, I think that open what we want to call this painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and they come up with some bizarre suggestions, you know, but what, you, what you've done is started a theme there. Mm -hmm. um, Right. So when you say, what would you call it, you mean title, what title yes. would you give it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that Paul de Vos one is the hardest one in the whole museum. <laughs> Generally <laughs> speaking, they're not, they don't the first do anything they do with the garden. No, they no. don't. No. They do that. Sometimes, you're right, by the they come up with yeah. menagerie, um, oh. a zoo run amok, <laughs> Noah's Ark. No, sorry. I mean, they, they come up yeah, with... Yeah, because there's pairs. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. they come up with all kinds of things, and then immediately you've gotten some cohesion. Right, right. right. And they know there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah, that's exactly. why it's so good. They can yeah. just get creative. Because the there. artist, we can't ask the artist. The artist is yeah. here. Right. So what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And then I continue that theme of people representing art from zoos and menageries, haven't seen them out in a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I continue that theme until I get over to the big four. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And then everything changes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. right. You nice. could do a theme to one just Oh, wolf. I do. Wolf is like Yeah, for four. sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To wolf and then everything yeah. changes. Yeah, everything changes. But one, <laughs> one, one, one fun thing I have, Jane helped me with years ago. Um, you know the Jericho lion? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that came from Peter Paul Rubens. Right. Yep. And I have it. Jane helped me get the original that's in the Louvre on my iPad. 
And it shows those same lines pulling a chariot. Right, with, with the, the big fleshy the goddess yes. in it. What's that? With the big fleshy goddess in it. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, um, and so then, you know, you're, you're continuing sort of that theme. And then they look and they see that. And then, then you get over to um, the Kaurangyas lions and look at the contrast. Right. Mm -hmm. Seeing them out in their own environment. Mm -hmm. And there is on that, well, that's um, not the lions out there. Wait a minute. That's not what that's that's not right. Right. What is it? You mean Bob Coon? Bob Coon. No, Bob Coon. William Coon. Sorry. Bob Coon. No, William Coon. Oh, Coon. That looks like a velvet painting. It looks like one of those velvet blankets you see on the side of the road. Because you just want to pet them. Thanks, Mike. I misspoke. <laughs> yeah, but we know what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> no, we want to go Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. So it's it's noon. I'll wrap up just in. Um, I made a list here, and honestly, I don't know if some of these links will work because they link to my desktop where I've saved an article. So these links might not work. But um, I have some articles, and a couple of these are on the um, the volunteer webpage where all the resources are. Um, but I've reminded you here that we have the YouTube channel where I post all the training videos. We have our volunteer page with the password written there in red, 18VOLNMWA. Um, that will also take you to VicNet if you choose to go that route to find it. Um, it's one easy way to do it. Um, there's a good article about themes, um, how, to, how to use a theme. And then there's also this great, it says Thinking Routines resource. This has a list of a bunch of links to different sort of ideas for thinking routines, like <coughs> the one that I'm the most familiar with is See, Think, Wonder. So you're asking them, what do you see, what do you think, and then what do you wonder? Hmm. And so there are tons, I mean, there's probably a hundred links on this page of just some little tidbits of things that you can try with a group, and it's a really cool resource. And then there's one that says four steps to using visual thinking in the museum. Um, that's basically like a thinking routine. Um, VTS, they call it visual thinking strategies. That's just the idea that you're engaging them by asking questions more than giving them facts. And then there's also, if you're on Facebook, there's the National Docents Forum. Um, it's kind of an interesting page there. It's started by the Docent Symposium that I attended two years ago now. Um, Sometimes they post interesting things, but a lot of times I'll share it. <laughs> what I see on there, a lot of articles and stuff I share with you guys anyway, but in case you're curious, it's a private group, so you can just ask to be invited um, if you are interested.